Few days ago, all 235 Corset cards were revealed. Instead of making full review about all of them, I've decided to talk about cards I feel will have the biggest impact in Standard for next year. At this point, it's pure speculation, since we don't even know all cards that are in Forge of Baron's set yet. Still, I believe that the cards I will mention will see a lot of play and possibly warp the meta, or have decks built around them at some capacity. For the most classes, I'll talk about two cards. To make some sort of honorable mention in number one, I will discuss a little more neutral cards, and with this, let's start. Demon Hunter is losing many powerful cards from its initiate set, like Twin Slice, Mana Burn, Blade Dance, and so on. Still, they have a decent amount of powerful things in X Core set that it was tough for me to choose something specific. For honorable mention, I've decided to pick brand new card, Ganar Glaysmith, as he should provide a good effect for tempo Demon Hunter decks. It might be a bit too slow for aggro Demon Hunters, but even there, it can find its place. The most impactful though will be a package of cards Eye Beam, Aldraki Warblades, Chaos Dragon, and Raging Fell Screamer. The first three will make sure we'll have some sort of tempo Demon Hunter decks in the meta where Ilgenov can be a possible win condition. The latter one will make sure that OTK version will be in certain post rotation. Druid got a huge shift in designing new score set, losing all spells that deal targeted damage and got feral cards instead. So you trade with your own face. Currently I see no way for this to work unless we get a lot of support for this theme in new expansions. Druid still has some token theme going on, so I can expect these decks to remain with Power of the Wild and Soul of the Forest. Not much to say about these. First we'll make your board bigger and second we'll make it much harder to clear completely. Norge Seal Druid will probably be an auto include in any slower Druid deck by being effectively one mana 3-5. With Anubis of Defender leaving the standard, this will be a decent replacement. Hunter is in a rough spot. The core set cards from its current archetypes rotating, together with all time favorites, Animal Companion, and Kill Command missing an extended. There is still a very good Hunter card though, and if this class will see the play, you will see this card too. And I'm of course talking about Quick Shot, a card with no downside, and its extra effect will proc a decent amount of time, whether you are playing a Face Hunter or something slower. Mage has a lot of decent stuff and almost nothing you can call useless. Archaeologist will be a good addition into your mage deck if it is a secret centric, but you can also add few secrets into your slow mage deck just so you get an effect of this 2 drop. A very powerful card that you will see a lot throughout this year. Spell damage mage is a real thing already, and with new mage legendary Aegwyn the Guardian and shooting star returning, this thing will stick around. The core of this deck will change a lot though, with the side quest elemental allies rotating this year. So we'll probably deviate from elementals. Paladin's classic and basic sets were very bad, but the cuts from latest expansions weren't. Getting too strong core set would make Paladin a very problematic class. Fortunately, the new core set expands the amount of possible Paladin archetypes instead of making currently strong decks even better. Avenge is one of the strongest secrets of all time, and you'll probably run it even without building your deck around secrets. But Warhorse Trainer, together with the new card Procedure Justice, can make Jude Paladin finally to work, combined with several support cards from Darkmoon Fair. With Galakron rotating, Priest finally won't have an infinite value generator. And I want to believe that buff Shadow Form will be the way for Control Priest to finish games. The best card for Priest in new corset is new Shadow Visions, aka Thriving Shadows. Yes, you won't get an extra copy of the card, but it won't matter most of the time, 
as it is a very powerful tutor to get the spell you need at the exact moment. Rock probably had the best basic and classic sets, and they will have one of the best core sets. The best staples for many rock archetypes are back, Sinister Strike, Backstab, SI7 Agent, Deadly Poison, and even Prep. They will see play in next standard for sure, but I want to focus my attention on two other cards. Tom Pillage was a very good rock card in the past. I'm certain that it will see play because of one neutral card I will talk about later, either in old school Miracle Rogue or in some slower rogue decks, since they will be able to play the stuff earlier with coin from Tom Pillage at their disposal. I'm surprised to see Shadow Step though. The only reason I thought Foxy Fraud didn't get nerfed in the past was because of Dev Team wanted to rotate Shadow Stab instead. But now I can feel that either of those cards will get a nerf in Euro Griffin. The Shaman got a lot of things buffed to be either more consistent or just up to date. Lightning Storm is finally a card that will not frustrate both players for getting too much damage or not enough of it. We lost the spell damage totem though, and with this running Nova Zapper will be a requirement. It is especially good with Landslide to be able to damage twice for only 3 mana. Warlock received cards that support one of these 3 archetypes, Zoo, Discard or Control. Tiny Knight of Evil will fit well into current Zoo locks that run this amount of discard cards, and if you play him early, he can get very big very fast. Lord Jiraxus finally got a rework many people were asking for since the release of Death Knight Hero cards. Now Jiraxus looks like a real win condition for control warlocks, and it will be very hard for anyone to fight through the swarm of 6-6 infernos every turn. Warriors still have a lot of staples after the rotation in Corset, so expect to see a lot of brawls in slower warrior decks. Few new cards allow tempo warrior style decks to exist, and you will play blood style deck in there, because it will be the 0 mana 2-1, where you will be able to equip a good weapon a turn earlier, since her discount remains throughout multiple turns. Now there are much more neutral cards, so I'll talk briefly about a few of them. Annoyatron. In case we have hyper-aggressive decks, this will be able to take 2 hits for 2 mana, which can help a lot. Explosive Ship is a good anti-aggro card, and these cards are welcome. Nerubian Egg might be a centerpiece for egg zoo decks or slower death rattle decks. Long Champion is not quite a Tark Reaper, but it's still decent. I am actually very surprised we will see Getch's own Auctioneer in next standard. So old school, Miracle Rogue together with Tom Pillager are possible, and possibly some sort of Miracle Priest with the amount of cheese spells they got if there will be some payoff or heavy draw. Nozormu the Eternal. Will 7 mana 8 8 be good enough for people to run it? I don't know, but I want to see tournaments where you're required to play Nozormu, so it will be some sort of speed hardstone. Alex Alexstrasza the Lifebinder. We'll see as much play as old Alex, if not more because it's still very flexible. Malagos the Spellweaver Old Malagos was a very interesting card for combo decks, and this one can be even better, combo enabler. Or you can run it to draw spells if you don't run too many of them. Deathwind the Destroyer This can be a very powerful removal against few minions at the cost of discarding few cards. This will be especially good for classes that don't tend to run a lot of removals, or classes that can play it earlier through ramp, so it drew it hard. And that's it for this video, thanks for watching. Share your thoughts in the comments about which core set cards will have the biggest impact on standard meta. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content. If you like this format of the video, then you can like this video so more people can watch it too. If you have an interesting topic for discussion, write it in the comments, because I obviously read them all the time. If you want to see me not only talking but playing, check out my other videos on the YouTube and my Twitch streams.